This episode of The Young Turks is brought to you by Netflix. Go to netflix.com slash TYT for your free trial membership. Now let's talk about the WikiLeaks revolution in Tunisia. Now some object to calling it that, but I'm going to show you why I think that is largely true. Of course everything is more complicated, but I'll give you all the details. First, uh, what happened in Tunisia and how was it set off by WikiLeaks? Well there was a, an uprising in Tunisia and it was initially sparked by uh, a man named Mohamed al uh a young Tunisian uh, who set himself on fire and died in mid-December uh, because uh, they had taken away his cart uh, that he was selling and, and, and made demands of him and he was desperate etc right uh, and then that sparked a lot of protests that eventually took down the government but where did it start even before that well the reason that the whole country was mad and they knew they had a leader who uh, had been you know corrupt for 23 years but WikiLeaks revealed US cables that let us know specifically how corrupt they were and what exactly they did. For example, in June of 2008, the U.S. Embassy in Tunisia, or in Tunis uh, particularly, wrote, whether it's cash, services, land, property, or yes, even your yacht, President Zini al Abidini Ben Ali's family is rumored to covet it and reportedly gets what it wants. And when they saw this level of detail, it confirmed in the mind of Tunisians that they were, this Ben Ali family, the president's family who had been running it, the country for 23 years, was, as they suspected, what they call a quasi-mafia. But there was more in the cables. Uh, in one of the cables they said, with real estate development booming and land prices on the rise, owning property or land in the right location can either be a windfall or a one-way ticket to expropriation. Now what that means is if the president's family likes your land and as they have done and as we now see through the cables and otherwise uh, they would say oh yeah no I'm sorry that's a beautiful piece of land but the water department needs it and the water department would take it for a little while and then shockingly they would sell it at a very reasonable price to the president's son-in-law. Now this happened in so many different ways here's another scam that they ran they would say Oh, you want a contract in Tunisia? Of course. Uh, first, we're going to have to, you know, run it through an intermediary. Now, that's one of the oldest scams in the book. The intermediary, of course, is connected to the family, funnels all the money to the family. Another scam is we're going to privatize some things in Tunisia. But first, we will sell it to one of the family members or friends or connected businessmen, and then he will sell it at an enormous profit to the person who's actually going to run it. So that's all the different ways that they rob the Tunisian people. Now you see these cables through WikiLeaks and the Tunisian people get even more upset. And they go, okay, we've, we can't take this anymore, right? And once the guy lights himself on fire, the protests erupt and it starts to devolve or, or depending on your definition, get much better. To the point where, hey, look at that, we've got change in Tunisia. There's at least one country with some change. Uh, what happened was the president was deposed. Uh, we had uh, Zine al Abidin Ben Ali step aside. Uh, and then his prime minister, Mohammed Ganoushi, took over. Ganoushi was connected to Ben Ali. Well, now the latest development today is he has basically stepped aside. Now, he retains his post, as do several top ministers connected to Ben Ali. But uh, Faoud Mabaza, the parliamentary speaker, becomes the interim president. The, in other words, a person in power. The prime minister gets his role, but the president's really in charge, and the president and some of the top uh, people in the government now are with the opposition party. So it is basically a revolt that worked. Now, of course, the people uh, in the streets would have preferred that those top uh, officials that were connected to Ben Ali not be in the government at all, that they step aside. And the fact that they are still there, including the prime minister, of course is dangerous, right? But it is a revolt that largely worked and it was amazing, right? And it was precipitated by a desperate but courageous young man who unfortunately set himself on fire because I, I think that's, of course, I think that's crazy. I, I wouldn't do it, but I'm amazed by it. But it did precipitate, precipitate these series of events. So now the only people who say, oh, WikiLeaks had nothing to do with it are people who don't like WikiLeaks. Because, I mean, given this fact scenario, if you think, 
uh, the WikiLeaks cables revelations about what the Ben Ali family was doing specifically, including, by the way, their interest in import-export business, the media business, internet providers, telecoms, banks, shopping centers, and property development. If you think all that had nothing to do with it, well, you're being absurd. You're only doing that because you don't like WikiLeaks and you want to protect governments. Now, this is why I love WikiLeaks because they do not protect the government. They are not in bed with the authority, whether it's the United States government or the Tunisian government. They tell the people what is actually happening in their government. And if the people choose to take action, great. They have in Tunisia. And uh, I, look, it is doing, in my opinion, the world a great service by giving real transparencies to governments all across the world. Get a load of Netflix. They deliver the movie to your house, no late charges, free shipping. You can watch thousands of movies or TV shows straight on your PC or on your television through a gaming console. Netflix.com slash TYT, free trial membership, you get Netflix all over you.